So what's up with EPSS? You can think of CVSS as a generalist, EPSS as a very narrow specialist. That's coming up next on Nucleus Shortcuts. Hey everyone, it's Adam Dudley. Welcome to Nucleus Shortcuts, where we help you with the fundamentals, tips, and tactics for building a scalable vulnerability management program. In this video, we'll be talking with Dave Farquhar, who has remediated over 800,000 vulnerabilities in his career. Curious to know how Dave has used EPSS? Stick around to find out. Would you just kick us off with a brief take on, uh, you know, what the heck EPSS is and maybe give us a light dose of historical context? I think it's a fairly new thing. At its heart, it's a percentage. So if you see 94, the score is that is trying to say that vulnerability has a 94% probability of exploitation. I just looked up the famous log for J, 90.5. So 90.5% okay. chance of exploitation is roughly what they're trying to say there. There you go. And it stands to reason that a vulnerability with a score like 94, 90.5, something like that deserves immediate attention, where a vulnerability with a score of, like, say, 20 deserves to take a lower priority than those. To contrast it with CVSS, CVSS is trying to sum up everything about a vulnerability in a single number, where EPSS is trying to do one thing well, and only one thing. So you can think of CVSS as a generalist, EPSS as a very narrow specialist. Okay. And so they are using statistical modeling to look at vulnerabilities that have been exploitable and look at other vulnerabilities, ideally vulnerabilities that are not yet exploitable, and see, hey, what do these have in common? Okay. And then based on how closely they resemble vulnerabilities that have become exploitable, try to predict, well, this vulnerability, is this vulnerability likely to become exploitable? And then they go and they score all of them. Now, they even score the vulnerabilities that are exploitable. So that's a little bit of nuance there. Getting into the meat of the topic, you know, why does EPSS matter in the context of vulnerability management programs? The big reason that I like EPSS better than CVSS is because it it follows the bell curve much better than okay. uh, much better than CVSS does. The the assumption with CVSS is that it's following a bell curve or that it at least has an even distribution and it doesn't. That gives us two good use cases for EPSS. That first thing that you can use it for is prioritization. Mm -hmm. and there may be two reasons you want to use this. So if Mandiant hasn't scored a vulnerability yet for some reason, mm -hmm. you can use EPSS to fall back and prioritize that way. Okay. Another thing that you could do would be to use Mandiant for critical and high vulnerabilities, then use EPSS to prioritize medium and low vulnerabilities. Okay. The theory being if, if Mandiant calls it a medium or a low, that there isn't exploit activity or not very much exploit activity going on yet. But if the EPSS score is higher, that says that it has the potential to okay. become a problem sometime in the future. Got so it. that would be a way to get ahead of the curve without saying, yeah, I need you to fix all the mediums and all the lows. So the other place that you could consider using this would be in your risk acceptances. Now there is an equation somewhere in my big green CISSP book <laughs> It says risk equals probability times impact. Right. Impact isn't too hard. Uh, you can just go in and Google the average cost of a ransomware incident or the average cost of a breach mm -hmm. and call that your impact if you want to keep things nice and simple and have a nice dollar figure here. Got it. Take the EPSS score because it's a percentage and multiply that. 6% of $5,000 doesn't scare me nearly as much as 94% of $5,000. So when we have EPSS data, it will show in the vulnerability intelligence section of a finding. So mm -hmm. I'm gonna pull up 
we've got log4j in this demo environment here. We That's a classic. <laughs> yes. Becoming a classic. <laughs> Becoming a classic. It's, it very quickly became one of the all-time greats, yes. Yeah. <laughs> so you will see the EPSS score in between the CVSS score and the the Mandiant rating. I could bring up another one as well. So here's one that is a little bit less classic. And mm -hmm. you can see here, Mandiant rated at a medium. EPSS yeah. score is only 1.4%. Okay. And not exploited in the wild according to man yet so right. and this thing's been around for three or four years not have it doesn't look like a great prospect here so yeah. this is kind of where what we like to see this kind of a score so right. hey you know do i accept this risk i'm more inclined to accept this one the last one that we looked at <laughs> for sure <laughs> yeah so, the, the previous one warrants some additional investigation right Right. And like, this is one of this is a nice example where um, I can find you CVSS eights that have low EPSS scores. This one isn't quite at eight, but it's a seven point eight. Mm -hmm. So getting close, close there, mm -hmm. but EPSS score is one point four percent. So it does not have a bright future as far as becoming exploitable, as far as we know. It just doesn't have those attributes. Mm -hmm. The oh, cool. Now, the good news there being when you are able to reduce the number of vulnerabilities that you're really worried about using threat intelligence and pre-threat intelligence like this, it is much more practical to look at asset criticality in business context. You can do that across 2% of your environment much, or 2% of your vulnerabilities much more easily than you can get across 80% of them. So this is how you would go about checking to see in your environment what percentage of them matter. So note this number at first. So we've mm -hmm. got 89,000, know, almost 9,000 vulnerabilities yeah. in our environment. Big so number. I go here and I filter and I come down here and find EPSS and I'm going to say greater than and I'm going to go ahead and say 0.67. Okay. And I search and I've got 235. If that number seems a little bit too much, I want to prioritize and say which ones have a score of like 90%. Okay. Should be a much smaller score than it is. Yeah. Yeah. So now we're at forty-two. So yeah, okay, that's that seems like a manageable number. Mm -hmm. So you can go and do that to, and then also keeping in mind, you will probably be doing this as a second pass. At least if I were doing this, okay. I would fix my Mandiant criticals first. Sure. Then my Mandiant highs. Then now all I have are things that Mandiant has scored medium and low. Mm -hmm. Take this pass at it. Now okay. I've set myself up for future success, and then we can figure out how we want to prioritize from there. We can look at an automation rule. Nice. So if I do go to automation and go to finding processing, and I've got all kinds of things in this environment here. Mm -hmm. um, but let's take a look at this one. So I went and I created a rule that says, hey, if I've got a Mandiant risk rating that is medium or low, but I've got an EPSS score that's greater than 0.66, and I could say 0.67 if that makes you more comfortable, whatever risk tolerance you're comfortable with. Does 67% does seem like seem unacceptable does 50 percent seem unacceptable does 90 mm percent -hmm. seem unacceptable yeah every organization has a little bit different degree of risk sure. tolerance so if you know that that's what epss is just trying to predict likelihood of exploitation so put a number in there that makes you feel that you're comfortable with then based on that set a severity if you would like mm -hmm. and always put a reasoning in when you recast mm -hmm. and the other thing that i did here was have it set a due date say hey you know 45 days from when the rule runs we want to go and we want to fix vulnerabilities that meet this criteria so okay. give you a month and a half so that's nice. just an example 
but you know, feel free to adapt that to uh, your particular situation. Before we wrap up this episode, in your view, is there something that's most important for folks to take away from our conversation today? There is some visibility that we don't have into exactly you know, how they're doing the modeling and all that. But keep in mind that with statistics, there's always a margin of error. Sure. Industry standard margin of error is 5%. Mm-hmm. 